Hey Carly. Say hello to your internet friends. Hello. Hi everybody. <laughs> I see her. Uh, oh, she's got her. Yes, yeah, she's got her own ID now. I have to wear it because it bangs on her knees. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. You're official now. Yeah. <laughs> And you've won some rosettes, haven't you? Yes, Easter rosettes. <laughs> Easter yes, rosettes, nice. well done. Happy Easter on them as oh, well. you lovely Carly. It's the hero of Clatterbridge. <laughs> hey internet. Um, so I've only got about six days left of radiotherapy now. So I'm really coming towards the end. Um, I felt horrendously tired on the way home from Clatterbridge today and I pretty much just sleep the whole way back home and when I got back home I felt even more tired to be honest I was just thinking oh I just need to get straight into bed and uh, and I didn't do that actually what I did was I put lots of cold water over my head and on my hands and um, and then I went out in the sunshine for a while um, just that technique I was talking about yesterday in terms of a C, uh, you do the CT before you uh, have sun exposure to increase the amount of vitamin D that you're taking on board and luckily again today um, we are having a, a quite a bit of sun and this storm has gone and it never really touched here to be honest um, which is good um, and I have also had what I would call a bulletproof tea so it's basically a tea that has a lot of fat in it, uh, all to do with diet. Because uh, this morning I had my lowest uh, ketone reading of uh, 1.0, um, so it was a bit disappointing. I think it's more to do with the fact that there is just so... Because carbs have become such an entrenched part of the Western diet, um, when, you, when it comes to a diet where you need to avoid them, that's incredibly difficult because they're everywhere. Um, for example, last night I had um, a fish meal around 5.30, uh, well, while it was getting dark, and um, I had uh, lots of fat in there with it. It was a very fatty, oily fish, and but on top of it I put um, takeaway, I think it's called dal curry, where it's just like vegetable and chickpeas in there and so on. But the problem is, in the actual sauce, there's probably lots of MSGs and different types of sugars that we don't know about. So I need to be more careful about um, what I eat going forward, and especially once I've finished treatment. I have to... I think you can never re truly get away from carb counting, um, because it's hidden sometimes. Um, we, you know, we don't have a real good choice in terms of what we put in our bodies in in this country or pretty much most of Western Europe and, and America um, because those carbs are just thrown in there and, um, well, to be honest, willy-nilly. People should always have a choice of what goes in their body. Um, now, in terms of cancer treatment, of course I'm um, more now in favour of legalization of cannabis and basically anything that has been shown to be beneficial for a cancer patient uh, and of course I'm, I'm all for legalizing whatever that is if it has a benefit then it should be legal and uh, you know patients should have a right to decide you know what they take and um, and that also goes for things like chemotherapy you should have a right to decide what you don't have as well. For example, I'm not going to have chemotherapy, even if they offer it me. So in a few months, if I have to go back to Clatterbridge, have a scan, and they say, oh, all right, it's chemo time, then I'm going to say no. And the reason I'm going to say no is because, well, for one thing, I have a grade three brain cancer, and it's very controversial to use chemotherapy for that anyway. Even if you do have certain um, gene markers, uh, for example, I have the IDH1 uh, positive uh, gene marker. I just don't believe in chemotherapy. Um, I've seen it do a lot of harm to people. I've seen very few people that it's actually benefited. And 
it's kind of a potluck whether you have the right kind of genes that make it work for you. Uh, anyone else that's had success from it has had to severely um, adapt their home protocol to make it work in their favour and like what I've been trying to do with radiotherapy uh, my home protocol which is my cocktail of things I take and food supplements and so on uh, is at the moment is all geared up to make radiotherapy work as best as possible and when I finish radiotherapy it's going to shift to uh, more improving the, my immune system so I will go from a different one protocol to another uh, gradually as the inflammation in the brain starts to reduce um, and I will then be taking probably a more stricter um, lower carb intake. I saw an interesting article on Facebook a couple of weeks ago that I think it was um, the new scientist and it was posing the question are carbs the new cigarettes and immediately Cancer Research UK jumped on that to deny it. I agree with that article. Carbs are kind of the new cigarettes and the reason I say that is because if you are predisposed to a cancer like I obviously am then carbohydrates will feed that, ca that cancer. So if you look at cancer cells and their kind of life cycle if you will so what they what are they feeding off and what keeps them going so first of all you have mitochondria which has failed and that's why you have this uh glycolysis sort of cycle where it, i'm sorry i must apologize i um i'm not uh the best in terms of explaining uh the science behind why cancer goes malignant and so on, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, so, and what what are mitochondria for? They're, you know, for your en they process the energy in your body, and if they're not working, then you're going to have problems where if a cell goes wild, like a cancer cell, then there's pretty much nothing there to um stop that happening and that's when you when you get this wild sort of out of control inflammation feel free to correct me if i'm wrong on any of these science parts uh, i always am wary with these vlogs when i do something sciencey i don't want to get anything um wrong and spread disinformation so please if there's anything that you you feel is definitely wrong and you've got some papers that you could show me uh just send me in, uh, a link in the comments um or I'll always be happy to answer any uh, messages that get sent to me on my channel. So I'm almost at the end of treatment. Now, there's people I trust and there's people that I don't trust with my treatment. Now, I'm sorry to say to probably the majority of the UK, but I don't trust Cancer Research UK. I gave money to them every month for, for three years before this happened to me. And now, it, now that it's happened, um, when I rang them up, I uh, got talking to a nurse about what my options are, and it was just a very cold, cold response. I feel it was scientifically naive, the response I had from them. And the reason I say that is, when I look at what they debunk, if you will, on their website, uh, the things that they say there's no evidence behind. I found evidence behind, you know, so they've not looked properly at a lot of what they've put up on their website. Um, and I just, I get the impression when I talk to them that they're so pharmaceutically driven that they're pretty much in the hands of them. And that's why I don't trust them. Um, who I do trust I do trust braintumorresearch.org and I trust them because I see the type of uh, research they do does seem to support a lot of the metabolic um, theory that we've been looking at and if they had better funding I'm pretty sure they'd have better results than anyone else. They understand the blood-brain barrier very well 
Um, I'm not such a fan of uh, the Brain Tumor charity, and the reason I'm not such a, a fan or trust them so much is because, well, I've seen their policies, which they have released online. Uh, you can view them in PDF format, and I disagree with so much of these policies. Um, they seem like they've been ripped from Cancer Research UK's website. It just seems copy and paste job, to be honest. Um, there's just certain things in there that are just not right, just incorrect. And um, so I think it's really important to know who your friends and enemies are, really, because you need as many friends as possible when you're going through a cancer battle of any kind. It's a, it's a sad fact that there's companies and people out there that don't even know me or will, will never meet me but they will profit from me going through chemotherapy, they will profit from me staying ill. Um, it's disgusting, but I suppose psychopaths have got to get a job somewhere. So I'm going to leave it there. I've ranted a bit and I've tried to uh, make it interesting today, but uh, hopefully I did my job okay. So uh, yeah, so only six days left now. Um, so really near that finish line so we're getting there so see you later everyone keep on moving and hold your head up high keep on believing don't question why still get the feeling that something's inside you still got the magic it hasn't your heart and soul